Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, one of the most asked questions I get is about sewing machines. So today we're gonna talk about machines and how to pick the right one for you. Now, when in the market for a new sewing machine, always keep in mind the reason that you're looking for a sewing machine. Are you a beginner? Are you looking for something that is going to handle heavy weight or lightweight or quilting or applique? Are you looking to make costumes? Or are you just looking for a sewing machine that kind of does it all? So for today's video, I'm actually gonna show you a couple of the machines I have in my shop and why I love them. Up first, we have the 1034D by Brother, which is a home serger. This is a baby lock, a three to four thread serge, with differential feed. This sewing machine is designed to finish the edges or the hems of a wide range of fabrics, um, anywhere from like formal type of fabrics to linens to stretch fabrics. And yes, I do actually use this on quite a few different types of pleather and leather type fabrics. This sewing machine is a workhorse. I absolutely love it and it is such a huge staple in my shop. This little machine actually has the ability to stitch up to 1300 stitches per minute, which is pretty fast. And I use this sewing machine on pretty much all of the costumes and clothing that come out of my shop. And I do already have a few other videos that are based on this sewing machine that kind of teach you how to calibrate and how to thread this machine because it can be kind of intimidating at first. So definitely please check out my other videos. So up next we have the Singer 4423 heavy duty sewing machine. I'm not gonna lie, I actually do have a love-hate relationship with this little sewing machine right here. Um, I have used this sewing machine quite a few times. This machine is advertised as to be able to work with heavy duty because it has a metal interior frame and parts of this machine are actually made of stainless steel, which, so it's, it is a pretty heavy duty sewing machine. It does have 23 built-in stitches. It has an auto threader. So this is a good sewing machine if you're starting out. The one downfall I did find to this sewing machine is that when you're changing different fabrics, like if you go from working on a lightweight fabric to a medium or heavyweight fabric, you are gonna have to go through and recalibrate all of your stitch settings and such just to make sure that it fits the type of fabric that you're working on. Now, this machine is a drop-in bobbin as opposed to a pop-in bobbin. One thing that I personally have found for myself is that I prefer the pop-in bobbin. The reason why is that you run a higher risk of getting those rat's nests underneath the back end of your fabric if you are working with a drop-in. Up next, we have this white 1418 model sewing machine. This was actually made by the White Sewing Machine Company that was founded back in 1858. This company actually no longer exists. Um, this sewing machine, I believe I picked it up at a garage sale. I want to say it was probably about four years back. I have used a sewing machine like this before and I really liked it for doing quilting. Um, there is a certain foot that you can attach to this, it's like the quilting foot. And um, this machine does really good with free motion quilting. Um, this is a pop-in bobbin sewing machine. Um, there's a lot of features on this one that are pretty much like your straight stitch and your zigzag stitch. So this is good for beginners. The one feature of this is you can see this little center knob right here, the white part. Um, you actually can disengage the motor for the needle so you can wind your bobbins better without having your needle plug up and down. So that's a good feature. So up next we have the Brother CS6000i computerized sewing machine. So honestly, straight across the board, I think this is probably the most user-friendly sewing machine on the market right now. I think this was actually used on the Project Runway show a few years back, which is what got me interested in it. Um, anyway, so it's got this LCD screen that you can easily switch in between all of your different stitch stitches that you can see that are listed on the front of the sewing machine. It's really user friendly. Um, I actually use this sewing machine primarily for the buttonholes because 
It's got, I want to say about six or seven different buttonholes on it that are absolutely beautiful. Um, this little sewing machine will also do a whole bunch of different applique stitches and it is great for doing quilting as well if that's something that you're into. Now it does come with this extra extended table which I absolutely love. It gives you more workspace and this sewing machine needs a bath as well but that's not what I wanted to show you. On the back side of this sewing machine right down here there is this switch which actually disengages your lower feed dogs so when you're doing free motion quilting on the sewing machine it is easy breezy and just such a great sewing machine so this one definitely if you're a beginner or intermediate sewer this is an awesome little sewing machine i highly recommend it So up next we have my Singer Simple 2263 sewing machine. This is a pop-in sewing machine as opposed to a drop-in. And I'm just going to tell you guys flat out, straight across the board, this is probably one of the best sewing machines that I could even suggest to you. Whether you are a starting sewer or intermediate seamer or if you are the type of person that is in a very busy costume shop like I am, like do not let the simplicity of this sewing machine fool you. Like I have owned quite a few of these machines and trust me, I've used machines that range from beginner sewing machines to intermediate sewing machines all the way up to industrial sewing machines and this little machine is a workhorse. I have come out of my costume shop building some really intricate, really heavy duty costumes with this sewing machine and this basic sewing machine can do so much so don't let it fool you. This one is actually great especially for the money. Um, you can pick up one of these machines pretty, pretty inexpensively and it's just a little workhorse. You're going to love it. And up next, this is my new baby. I love this sewing machine. This is actually a vintage Singer. This is the 301A. And this little machine I actually picked up from my friend a couple of months back. I love this machine. I just got her back from the shop. Um, she did need a little bit of love and obviously she needs a little bit of shine on that black again. But this little lever right here controls your stitch length and the reverse and the straight stitch function going forward. Um, this little lever here on the side is what you use to wind your bobbins and then over on the right hand side of the sewing machine you can disengage your needle to wind your bobbin as well. Um, this little machine weighs 16 pounds. <laughs> so for a vintage sewing machine, I mean this little machine is so awesome. I just, they don't make them like they used to. Um, I've actually been using this machine in my shop after getting it back from being um, pampered and I do use this sewing machine for doing gloves because you can see how the needle is like close to the edge of the sewing machine right here. There isn't that big bulbous part popping out so that part can be kind of hard with the newer sewing machines if you're not using an industrial. So I do like using this machine to build gloves and um, other kind of costume pieces that you need to get pretty close in. And as a little fun fact, if you saw the side profile of the sewing machine needle in the foot, this is actually called a slanted shank sewing machine, which was one of a kind that Singer put out. Like they've never done it since then. So there's a fun fact for you. Anyway, I hope you guys had a whole lot of fun and you were able to kind of decide the type of machines that are out there on the market. These are just a few, but if you do have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel before you leave. Follow me on all other social media and I will see you little sewers in the next video. Bye.